Hey everyone, this is Yan from Devolutions, and in today's video, we're going to be highlighting some of the top features of each of our products that have been uh, released in the October 2023 version of our software. So that would be 2023.3 of Remote Desktop Manager, Devolution Server, our self-hosted platform, as well as our cloud-based platform, uh, Hub Business. We also talk about our gateway in some of these features. So I sat down with our various product marketers and I asked them, hey, what would be some things that you wanna showcase and highlight in this video? But if there's um, more information that you want, uh, I definitely recommend that you check out each of their blogs that they did for the products. Uh, and I'll put the links in the uh, show notes below. So as always, if there is a specific feature that you are interested in, I encourage you to check out the timestamps I'm gonna put on the screen right now so that you can uh, go specifically to the area of your interests and find what you're looking for there. So we're gonna start off in Remote Desktop Manager and we're gonna take a look at what our unified features are, some of the things that are cross uh, solution. So let's take a look at that first. Okay, so for our first unified feature, we're calling the user interface tree view preferences. So in your vaults, you may have come across various entries that have been flagged as expired or disabled or archived. Well, for admins, these are great visual indicators that something needs to be fixed on an entry. But for others, it could end up cluttering up the interface a bit. So our team made a way to hide these entries in your vaults. Here you can see them in RDM, but I can also switch over to my DVLS here and you can see that they're also uh, flagged as well there. Now to set this up, I can simply go to my settings and then check whether I want to hide expired, archived or disabled entries in the view. Now when I click OK, and note, first of all, you'll notice here in RDM, they will disappear because they're hidden. And if I switch over to my DV last now, you'll also see that those entries that were there, uh, that were flagged are not hidden as well. And if I go into my settings in Devolution Server, I can also see here that in the uh, user interface preferences, they are checked as well. So it carried over from RDM to DVLS. And also if I switch over to my uh, Devolutions Hub as well, you'll see in the same spot in the settings, if I go to the user interface, I can hide and unhide them there as well. And they'll carry over from RDM to Hub and vice versa for your vaults. So the next feature has to do with improved session recording in Remote Desktop Manager and Devolution Server. So if you're familiar with session recording, you can uh, record in Remote Desktop Manager both locally to your local workstation, or you can actually record remotely to the server if you have a Devolution server, as well as the session recording uh, functionality enabled on the Devolution server. Now, what we're also gonna be doing here is we're gonna be doing this uh, RDP session remotely, recording it via the gateway, which provides that just-in-time access to the uh, private network resources, you know, without all the setup and the overhead of launching a VPN. So you'll notice here that the RDP session is going to be running through the gateway and it's going to be recorded and it's going to be extremely secure because the gateway is handling all of the security functionality. So here I am uh, typing hi y'all and uh, you'll notice here when I exit it, now there's a recordings tab in the entry itself where I can click and play the uh, session that I just recorded, but also now in the root of the vault, you'll see there's a recordings tab that I could see all of the recorded sessions. So that's pretty cool. So now I'm clicking play and then you could see uh, it, it recorded uh, the RDP session and it shows everything that I did um, in that functionality. So that's pretty cool. Now, if I switch over to my Devolution server and I go to that same session here that I was running, you'll see now that in the uh, logs button there, there is a uh, section. If I scroll over to the uh, right, you'll see a little play icon and I can actually play the recorded session directly in the browser. So that's really handy as well. So you don't have to have RDM even open in order to uh, uh, see those recorded sessions. 
Now let's take a look specifically at Remote Desktop Manager features. Uh, and this one is the RDP mouse jiggler. Now, Windows systems have various security policies to prevent malicious acts, right? So one of the policies is a timeout on inactivity, which sometimes could lock the operating system and also close any live remote desktop connections. So to prevent this, we introduced a parameter called mouse jiggler to simulate the user inputs in RDP ActiveX itself. And by the way, you won't actually see this happen. It just kind of happens magically in the background, but you can also send uh, uh, function keys if you want. So uh, to enable this function, simply navigate to the experiences tab in any RDP session and then uh, scroll down where the section says enable mouse jiggler and then you could set the jiggler interval hopefully that helps keep your sessions alive if you're uh, working specifically in rdp all right the next feature has to do with some various new uh, entry types that we've added and the first one is for those using the integrated dell remote access controller or idrac uh, we added a new entry type specifically for idrac systems versions uh, seven through nine, and that will help you quickly and easily manage your servers from startup to shutdown. And we support all three iDRAC protocols. So either VNC or VNC over WebSocket or the uh, native Avacent KVM protocol to uh, help you have more seamless integration between your systems and RDM. Our team has also added a, a new credential type, which is our X509 certificate, which is an alternative to passwords. And especially for those that uh, might want to facilitate that RDP smart card authentication. Now you can do so with this new entry type. Now for all of our Beyond Trust users, you'll be happy to know that we finally added the Beyond Trust password safe credential, which can be used as a single entry and shared amongst users in various vaults. But if you also go to your file options, uh, my account settings, you can set it as your default personal or privileged account credential so that uh, whenever using that my privileged account or my personal uh, credential, it'll load up in whatever sessions that you're running using your Beyond Trust credentials. Okay, moving on to Devolutions Hub Business. Many of you have asked us to look into uh, creating a way to restrict a user from seeing specific contents of a vault. So our team got to work and created a new restricted role that can be assigned at the vault level. Now this role only has the permission of viewing the vault, giving no access to the content of the vault itself. So you have to set that up uh, later on. So in this example, on my left hand side, I have my admin Bob and on the right hand side, I have Kelly, the uh, user that will be given that restricted role. So I have a uh, vault called Windjammer QA that uh, my admin's gonna go to. And you'll notice here that Kelly does not have access to it whatsoever. So then Bob's gonna go in and set up the settings of the permissions in the vault itself. He'll go to the new restricted role and he will add Kelly to it. And once that's updated and refreshed, now you'll see here, that Kelly will actually now see that uh, Windjammer QA vault, but there will be nothing in it. It's completely empty. So now Bob has to go in and assign her permissions to whatever she's looking for. So for example, let's say she needs access to this Montreal folder, which was some uh, RDP sessions to run. He can go to the security settings and then he can edit those uh, permissions. And there, let's say he wants to give her uh, operator access so that she can actually uh, execute the contents. So he can add Kelly to that right now. And then once that is refreshed, and then when Kelly accesses her hub, she'll have that restricted role on the vault, but she'll have the operator permission on the Montreal folder, which means she can execute those RDP sessions within, but that's all that she sees. So that's the new restricted role in Devolutions Hub. We've also added a few new options to help improve the customization of your vaults. So for the first one here, now you can actually edit the vaults root folder itself. So if you select the root folder here, like Windjammer main, now you'll notice that there's some new options like documentation as well as attachments. And if you click on the little pencil icon, you can actually edit the root. Uh, you can rename it and apply various properties to inherit in the folders and entries below. 
We also added the ability to favorite items in your vault so that they're easier to find. So you just have to click on the little star icon and they will appear on the favorites menu on the left hand side. Another feature we're really excited about is the ability to now launch web based RTP sessions directly from your Devolutions hub. Now, there are a couple of prerequisites to make this happen. First of all, you have to have a connection launching license, either by having a remote desktop manager license or a Devolutions launcher license. You also have to have a functioning Devolutions gateway. So as you can see here, I actually have a Devolutions gateway running and I can always check in administration to make sure that it's up and running as well. Now, once those two criteria are met, I'll have the little preview icon that appears there. And once I select it, it will launch the RDP session directly in my browser window. It's fast and it's also very secure because the gateway is handling the encryption on both ends. So it's a really easy way to launch RDP sessions without having to open Remote Desktop Manager. All right, moving on to Devolution Server. We recently added the system vault in Remote Desktop Manager, and now it has been brought over to the web portal for DVLS. And this is the best place to store all uh, globally shared resources. So it is the central location for VPNs, uh, macro scripts and tools, as well as contact information. And this can be shared amongst all your users. That way they have one place that's a centralized location to share common resources like these. Okay, next up, we've expanded the IT asset entries uh, that were available in Devolution Server. And these entries are really a great spot to store critical information on uh, servers and routers, serial keys, firewalls, appliances, anything that you store that's either hardware or software. Uh, these entries are great for keeping track of all of your items. This year, we've been really focusing on adding a lot more web-based protocols to uh, run in the web browser directly from your Devolution server via our secure gateway. And you may have known this already, but we had RDP available as well as a PowerShell console available all within the web browser. But we recently added the ability to run SSH sessions via the web as well as Telnet sessions. This is a great opportunity to elevate your security number one because it goes through the gateway, but also to easily execute sessions and launch them directly from the web browser. In this latest release, our team has provided a brand new way to synchronize your DVLS user list with your Active Directory users. So here, for example, I have a user, his name is Stuart Higgins, and he has moved on to another job. So in Active Directory, using the RDM80 console, this user has been deleted because he no longer works for uh, Windjammer Corp. And now that he's been removed, you'll notice that if I go over to my Devolution server and I refresh using this little synchronize users from the provider list, a pop-up will come up saying, we've detected that Stuart is no longer found in the AD. What would you like to do? Would you like to disable the account? Would you like to delete the account in your Devolution server? And we'll also check this unassigned licenses for disabled users. That way the license gets freed up since he's no longer working for Windjammer Corp. A simple but yet very effective feature to keep your DVLS user list nice and clean and up to date. While we're on the topic of user management, we've added the ability to better identify and tag specific user types in Devolution Server. So here I have a, a external contractor, his name is Tim Poole. And if I go into the options, I can see here that he's tagged right now external, which will provide a method to better keep track of these externals and privileged users throughout DVLS. And then there's also a report that we could look up that can identify those external or privileged users as well. Moving on to Devolution Server Privilege Access Management functionalities, we've added the ability to notify all the approvers during a PAM checkout. So here I have my user Kelly, who is going to do a routine PAM checkout. And now you'll notice that we have the all approvers icon. Instead of selecting a specific approver like Bob or Maurice, she can notify all of them at the same time. 
So she can fill out the rest of the form here by changing the access duration, adding a comment, and even elevating her permissions for this specific checkout. So if we go back to one of the approvers, here we have Bob. And as Bob verifies the uh, checkouts that are available, he'll see the pending checkout with Kelly requesting elevated IT technician access, and then he can approve or deny it as usual. Okay, so that's a wrap for the various features we wanted to showcase with you uh, of our October 2023 release of our various uh, products and solutions. If there's anything that you have any questions on, feel free to comment below and either I or one of our wonderful tech support staff will uh, be able to answer your questions there. Also, like I said earlier in the video, the links to the various blogs that we're referencing these features and highlights uh, will be in the links in the, in the description below as well. And as always, I uh, encourage you to like and subscribe to our channel. That helps me know uh, what content you're looking for and that you're enjoying the type of content that we're producing. So uh, thanks a lot for watching today and we hope you have a great rest of your day.